Hi Floss Tube. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda May and this is my channel, Ardith Design. You can find me online at ardithdesign.com and all the social media handles, I'm Ardith Design. <laughs> Welcome! Yay! Guess what day it is? Guess what day it is? It is Tuesday. Today is a very special, exciting day. Yes. <laughs> I filmed my first floss tube like a year ago today. So this is episode 52. Welcome to my channel. I <laughs> am so happy you found me. <laughs> <laughs> this is Luna, my, my, my little, one of my kids decided she needed a middle name. So her name is Luna Moon now. So that's her new middle name is Moon. So I guess it's like saying Chai Tea, right? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> welcome to my channel. I love to celebrate counted cross stitch and sustainable stitching and now pugs. Yes, and now pugs. <laughs> I got I got so much to show you today and I'm so excited that you're here. We're gonna do a save the stitches. We're gonna finish up talking about my adventure down to Durham, North Carolina to the scrap exchange. So I have some goodies to show you. I have matchmaker for three pieces. Thanks to you all. Thank you, my wonderful floss tuber watchers and viewers. You are amazing. So we're going to talk about that. And I'll show you the stitching that I've actually worked on this week. I had a little change of plans and that's okay. I think I burned myself out on Christmas stitching. I'm not gonna lie, I, yeah, I burned myself out a little bit. So I'll show you <laughs> my change of plans and what I decided to stitch. But before we get started, I got something to do. I got something to do. Yay, happy one year. Floss tube anniversary to me, and I'm wishing that you all have a beautiful week. And I hope that you want to continue to watch my channel and go on this needlework journey with me. I sincerely could not do it without you. Whether you're a first time viewer or you've been with me since the beginning, whether you're in the United States or across the pond or up a in uh, Canada, eh? you know, wherever you might be, just know that I appreciate you and that you bring joy and light to my life. And cross stitching has really and truly has <laughs> cross stitch has really and truly changed my life. And I cannot wait to share all the, all the awesomeness that this craft brings. So, <laughs> with that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go put this away. The pugs are circling and uh, wipe my face. I'll be right back. cake <laughs> and I'm back. Let's talk about counted cross stitch. Okay. Should we do matchmaker first? I think we should do matchmaker first. Okay. I want to thank all of you for sending me the research links to look into these pieces that I got from Scrap Exchange. So we're going to get started. I want to thank oh, all of you. I want to thank Doreen, first of all, 
for alerting me to this piece here. It's called A Child Lives With, and then it's like a, the birth sampler. It's a leisure arts pamphlet, um, baby sampler from like 1986. So that was really cool to put that face name together. The next one was identified by Kathy. This is the fall apple picking sampler and it's the cross-eyed crickets companion piece called the crickets companion from the fall chart leaflet number 54. <laughs> ah! I went ahead and color matched this. This was DMC 975 and I went ahead and finished this border because why not? So I finished the border and I have it all done and I went ahead and gave this a bath because it was a little worse for wear. So got a bath. It is wrinkled. I just got my best press in the mail to spray and get it all ready and good to go. I see that the pattern is available. So I'm debating if I want to get it. It looks like this is filled in in green and then they have little apples up here. And then a part of me just says, I want to leave it as is maybe finish off this. There's supposed to be little like handles here. Maybe just finish off the handles and call it a day. And I thought maybe wouldn't this be fun as one of the like project bag pouches, uh, joy filled stitcher, Annie makes these gorgeous little pouches. And so I was thinking about that or Erica D house and her project bags. I mean, so many people, so many beautiful project bags. Ah, oh, okay. Anyway, I'm going to calm myself down. <laughs> I'm going to think about how I want to finish this. And then finally the Teresa Wensler piece got identified by Doreen and Lola. Lola, sorry. Pugs, I gotta figure this out. Okay, Lola, thank you so much for all of your information on this piece. I went ahead and it is the Fantasy Sampler by Teresa Winsler. It is a discontinued out of print pattern. I don't have the pattern and that's okay. I grabbed it. I'm not sure if this will get rehomed or if I will just leave it in my stash and maybe in a couple of years I'll feel like dabbling in mythical creatures and spending an exorbitant amount of money on an out of production chart. But as of right now, it's clean. I gave it a bath. It had masking tape all along here. And I don't know if you can see the acid did wear away and discolored the edges of this fabric. I got some of the color, I got some of the residue off, but the staining is there. And, but it looks like the previous person who stitched this left a big enough margin here that the acid burn on the edges is, is, is minimal. I don't see any actual staining on the main part of the piece. So I feel good about it. Again, I got that those pieces out of the literally out of the bins at the scrap exchange in Durham. Thank you again for playing matchmaker with me and helping me to identify those three pieces. Awesome, 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 awesome. Okay, what have I been stitching this week? Well, I figured I didn't have enough to do in my life. I needed to start two new projects. That's right, two new projects. I finished up some Christmas stitching and hopefully I'll show you one of those projects in the weeks or the months to come. But first I gotta get some other stuff done with it. Anyway, I did work a little bit on my Needles Dance. This is the collaboration piece between the Summer House Stitchworks, Ink Circles, Kathy Haberman of Hands On Design. And I got well, it helps if I hold it correctly. I got a little bit of the pink put in and I started the bunny. And I realized that I love bunnies. I stopped, I had to really stop and think about it 
Yes, I love pugs. Hello. Duh. <laughs> but I also love bunnies. So that's, I don't like stitching a bunny going, I really do like bunnies. I'm keeping this project in my fancy zip bag. What are you going to do? It works. And now that I have pugs again, the pug hair. What was the pattern that <laughs> was at Nashville this year? The, the, the designer who had the one pattern that said this probably has cat hair on it. And then the companion piece was this probably has dog hair on it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. The next project that I am working on is I decided to start something new. What are you going to do? I have it in my fun little bag I got. I love it. It's vinyl and adorable and I love rainbows. All the things. I am decided, I decided to start stitching Fond Hearts by Maggie. And this is a, this is artwork that was charted and done uh, under the Blackbird Design label. So I, I've had this in my stash a little over a year. I purchased this in a second hand and it was before I truly learned about and really appreciated Blackbird Designs. Again, I am a new cross stitcher. So I'm learning a lot and thank you all for helping to educate and inform me. <laughs> so I decided to start stitching this piece. And it's from 2005 is when the chart came out under Blackboard Design. And it, to me, it looked very, yes, it's whimsical, but it looked like a Valentine's Day piece. So I decided to start stitching this. This is on a 32 count Belfast. I really like this piece. I started stitching it upside down so I'm reading the pattern upside down because <laughs> why not right <laughs> so I turned it upside down and I'm stitching down this section of the heart here and then I'm going to come around and then I'll stitch this side of the heart the the words are stitched over one and I think I'm going to do that last I'm going to get the heart and the foliage all done. I picked out my colors, but I'm wavering on the green. I picked out the Wild Rose Victorian Motto. I picked out the 1840 Candy Pink Victorian Motto. And then uh, this is my Bronze Glory, also Victorian Motto for the brown. I'm hemming and hawing on what I would like to do for the green. I held up a bunch of different shades of green and just nothing was speaking to me. But I've got a bit of time to get up to finish the heart and the center heart and then and then I can get to that green. Like I said, I pulled a bunch of greens and just none of them were resonating with me and that's okay. They it called for Havana. It has four colors in the charts. It calls for all week's dye works and the green is Havana. Yes. And so I don't have that in my collection. I have very few weeks colors. I have really enjoyed using Victorian Motto and Gentle Art and of course Sulky. So those are the three that I've been using, but it's not a lack of desire to try the other threads. It's just a matter of I just haven't yet. <laughs> and that's okay. I got a long way to go. I got a long time to stitch and to learn. So that's good, right? Okay. And the last project that I'm stitching on this week that I can show you. 
so many things. Okay. The last project is Key to My Heart. And I'm really excited about this one. I, so story time on this. Okay. I went through mm, all of my Christmas books, all of my cross stitch Christmas leisure arts books from my collection that I have acquired looking for the book that Diana of It's Kismet Stitches is doing for her hashtag Kismas in July S-A-L. So I'm looking everywhere for this pattern and then Leslie Hurley of Fat Cat Flossing showed her low her book of the pattern that Diana is stitching and I, so I looked everywhere I went through all my Christmas stuff looking for the Christmas stuff and finally I was just after looking for a couple hours at all my Christmas stuff I was like I don't want to I don't even want to stitch Christmas anymore so <laughs> this is literally the last magazine I was looking at seriously and <laughs> Y'all know that I love, I love Valentine's Day, right? Like, so here's like another pattern. So I'm in my magazines and this one is cross stitch and needlework. And it's from 2013. Yeah, early March of 2013. And I'm going through this magazine. Okay, right? And then lo and behold, here is Key to My Heart. And I'm like, wow, look at those colors and look at that beautiful font. Boy, whoever designed that, boy, sure has a way with fonts. Who do I know that I love that does all those beautiful fonts? Hmm, Kathy Haberman. <laughs> so this looks like, sh this is what Kathy and her designer uh and her partner her design partner Teresa Curry of Cherrywood Design Studios created together so you learn something new every day so I decided to start stitching this again after a couple of hours going through Christmas stuff I just threw in the towel and said it's Valentine's Day time it's time so, as the impulse starter that I am, I ran upstairs and grabbed the piece of 14 count Ada that I dyed because it's pink and fuchsia and why not? And I started stitching it immediately. I pulled out my sulky because I didn't have any of the colors that Kathy charted. It's calls for gentle art beautiful colors. It calls for grits, straw, red pear, and Madison rose. I don't have any of those. So I grabbed my sulky, which is amazing and I love. And so I'm stitching this uh, 14 count Ada, one, one sulky thread, the 12 weight blendables over one on this. Now I got the whole border done. Love it. Love it. Love it. I started on the text. Well, I stitch in hand, okay? <sighs> Amanda May made a mistake. So I had it all rolled up and I'm like working on it. I'm like, oh, this is fun. And so I go to start adding this piece here. I counted it. I thought I did everything correctly. Yeah, I did the whole thing correctly in the wrong corner, wrong corner. I, that took me like two and a half hours to do that chunk right there. So this is supposed to be over here, not over here. And I am debating if I'm going to rip this out or just put in the font, put in the, the message just put this in and leave this out altogether. Leave the big heart out. Maybe add a couple more or make this look, I don't know. 
I don't know what to do. Maybe add a little heart and then I could stitch the big heart here on a separate piece later, this side, because I don't like ripping out stitches. I, I don't, I like, my whole motto is just keep moving forward. Learn from your mistakes and move forward. So I, I haven't decided, I, I did not put this in time out. I decided to kind of persevere and I started on the words because I know I love C Kathy Haberman's fonts. Hello, gotta stitch those fonts. And I'm excited on Needle Dance, the way I started my pattern there for Needle Dance. You know she charted these, right? You know that's gotta be her font right there. Okay. That's what I'm stitching on this week. I want to show you some more of my haul. And this is related to my Barbara Anna finish. My Mermaids of the Sea. And all of you gave me some great feedback on what to do. I scoured the stores, the internet, all the things. And I have not put a single bead in since the last time we visited but I found this really cool piece of silver silver plate it's the pattern is called spring flower and I felt like because this is flowers of the sea and I feel like obviously it needs to go together so I picked this up for four dollars that's my price point because I yeah my budget I got that and then I went to the dollar store. I went to the dollar store and I got this little mount thingies here, the display easel. So I think I'm gonna try to do this and have it in. And then maybe add some like fun stuff in front here, like some bows and ribbons and all the things. So you don't see that. So we'll, see. okay, I got that. And speaking of dollar store, I did a video last year on your basics for cross stitch over organization and to grab those binders and page protectors. Right now is the time, people. Go on down and get your school supplies for your cross stitch stash. I went and got my school supplies from myself because who doesn't love a good binder? I went and got these binders. I can put some of the, my magazines, my loose leaflet charts, and the charts that are not your standard eight and a half by 11s that fit in page protectors. So I got, because I'm a geek and I love me some electronics. I love everything cassette tapes too. I know the millennial in me is coming out. But, and then food. I got this one. This is just a one inch. I feel like one inches are manageable. They're affordable like, because if they're filled with paper, like they're heavy, they can be like four pounds with paper. I grabbed the sheet protectors, like 16 for a dollar. I know you can bulk buy them elsewhere. I didn't bring it down to show you, but the magazine, the plastic magazine organizers. So what you can do is put, you can hang it and then put it inside your binder. I just got plain white here. Um, those are perfect for your magazines and then, you know, clearly labeled this. And so when you see, you're, you're seeing your sleek look of your organization. More sleeve page protectors. Oh my gosh. Okay. And then look at this. Look at these highlighters. Suck out. And then I got this for my kid. Okay. It was kind of for me. I love rainbows. I love all the cute things and I didn't know if that cloud is celebrating or if that cloud is a cloud unicorn, but either way, I love it. So again, back to school season, get on down. If you can afford, um, I paid nine, I got $9 worth of organizational supplies and I don't think I'm going to go through them all this year. I could though, because there's so many wonderful charts and all the things. Okay, let's go on to, what should we do? I think we should do giveaway stuff. Yes, okay, 
We're gonna do giveaway stuff and then I got more to show you, but wait, there's more. <laughs> In honor of my 52nd episode, one year floss tube anniversary, I am pleased to announce that Trish Turner of Threads Entwined, you can find her needlework shop at threadsentwined.com and I will have it linked below. Thank you, Trish. She is sponsoring this giveaway. What is the giveaway you might ask? Ah, it's a $25 gift certificate to her store. She carries cross stitch, uh, quilting, yarn, all the things. <laughs> Again, she's got a brick and mortar shop out of Windsor, California, and she also has an online store that I shopped at today because it's my anniversary, yay! And I wanted to treat myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, to enter the giveaway, you gotta be a subscriber. That's, I mean, Y'all are awesome. You all subscribed, right? So subscribe to my channel and then comment below and let me know one of the best moments or videos, either the episode or maybe the best moment from my channel over the last year that you would like to share and remind me about. That would be awesome. How would you sum up Amanda May's channel art of design? You know, what do you like about me? Because it's all about me. No, sorry, that didn't sound right. Let me know your fun memory from my channel to enter. Because I love reading your comments. You all brighten my day. For a $25 gift card to Thread and Twine, and then you can use it to buy any of your needlework goodies that, that she's got in stock. Yay! Thank you, Trish. Okay, giveaway stuff. And then, since I'm talking about happy, awesome stuff, let's talk about mail call. I got mail from Canada. <laughs> so exciting. Okay, Jill from up north. Hi, Jill. <laughs> Sent me this wonderful and thoughtful card. Congratulations on your one year floss tube anniversary with a wonderful note and she sent me all the things ah! i'm so excited i got a goodie bag and she prefaced by saying that i can share these with my kids and figure some good stuff out which how thoughtful is that i got canvas placemats i've never used these before i'm gonna see if we can paint on them or do something fun, right? How fun is that? It's a set of two. So maybe each kid could do something with it. And you know, mommy helps help not micromanage. That's what I gotta, I gotta work on that, right? <laughs> and then stickers. I love stickers. So I'm like, are these for me or the kids? I don't know. <laughs> How fun are those? And then she sent me 16 count Ada fabric and she said, you know, go ahead and stitch on it or dye it. How awesome is that? And it's a big piece. Look at that. Look at that piece. Ah! Awesome. And there's still more, but wait, there's more. <laughs> Got a little bead kit. So I think my, my kids will love doing this. My one kid loves doing patterns and stuff. So I'm not sure fine motor skills if we're, if we're there yet for both of them, but I know my eldest will really enjoy that. And then Canada, I got a little project pouch. This will be perfect to carry just the little goodies. And I like, it's got the flat bottom. I love it. And then she sent me, she said for when I travel to Canada, uh, yeah, look at this. I got a little travel bag. These are, these travel pouches are actually really awesome. 
I highly recommend. <laughs> I gotta renew my passport before I can go up north. I'm just saying. But wouldn't that be fun? I Like Pam and Steph are going to the Netherlands. I loved the Netherlands. Oh my gosh. And the, the giveaways, you know, like renew your passports. I'm like, if I didn't have young children. <sighs> anyway, I digress. Look at what else she sent me. It's got bunnies on it. Ah, it's got bunnies. It is Bare Roots Little Stitchies Bunnies Candle Mat. And it comes with all this stuff. Ah, and I'm so excited. I love the colors. It's got everything I love. It's got beads. It's got floss. It's got safe felt that I can use. It's got directions, fabric and floss kit to make a candle mat. I have never made a candle mat before, but I feel like I gotta, I gotta get me, I gotta get started on this. I gotta get going on this. So thank you, Jill, so much. That was, <laughs> thank you. I really appreciate it. And thank you all who watch it. Just thank you. Thank you all. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm trying. I'm trying so hard right now to, to not put anything where the pugs can reach it. So I'm like sticking stuff behind my chair as I'm filming. <laughs> I feel like I just keep getting closer and closer to the camera. Okay. I still have more to show you. <sighs> okay. I got some good stuff. This is another segment that... I, so hmm, I'm getting so excited. I'm getting ahead of myself. I went on the quest to find the round frame for my Barbara Anna piece. I went to the thrift store and they were processing items like right at the front counter as I walked in and I saw this and I said, is that for sale? And they said, yes. And I said, I'll me please. So I got this really pretty embroidered piece. It's got cut work and I really like it. And it's like an envelope. I don't know if this was like to hold letters or what, but it, it's got that very whimsical folk look to it with the cut work and the embroidery and I love it. And then on my way out of the store, I saw this and I said, oh, is this for sale? I, and they go, no, it's stained. We're about to throw it away. I said, yes, it is stink, but please don't throw it away. So I made a little donation and I got to take it home. And I, I really liked it. It's got a beet and the applique pepper. And look at that mushroom. I love a good mushroom. What did Julia Child say? Don't crowd the mushrooms. Julie and Julia. That was one of, that's a really cute movie. <laughs> if you like food and history and Meryl Streep, I mean, <sighs> anyway. Applique vegetables. I made a donation and got that. And then I also got, and I don't know where I'm going to put this. I mean, really. But I got this vintage card table placemat with the corresponding card suits and the clubs. Applique hand stitched down in the fabric oh it's so soft and the stitching and then each corner here and it looks like you would tie it onto the top of one of those like folding portable tables i don't know the age or the date for this piece it could have been done i don't know i'm not even gonna guess when this was done but i really like it and i got it i brought it home i i play cribbage I love cribbage. My husband plays poker. This face, I don't have a poker face. <laughs> My one kid loves crazy eights. So we're trying to do card stuff and go fish and stuff, but uh, I don't have a poker face. So what are you going to do? And then I got a whole collection, a whole collection of hankies. And with my allergies, I'm like, this, these are gonna come in handy. Look at this, I got, oh, so I got a second 
it, it had a second one. This one is stained. So I got two of these and then I got a collection of handkerchiefs and I bought it. I bought the whole, the whole set. $2, $2 for all of these. But I got, the whole reason I got it was, look at this, look at the stitching on this. Little stitches, little stitches. And then this one's got cross stitch on it. Look at that. How wonderful is that? I love it. This one's got beautiful stitching. Oh, it's really cute. And then just, I just love, I love the fabric of these. I mean, just gorgeous. And I've seen so many beautiful crafts using hankies. I, I spray painted my spoon rack and one of the things they showed on Pinterest was displaying your vintage hankies on a spoon rest that's a spoon rest cabinet thing wall hanging so I don't know I don't know I don't know what to do and these are just white but it's got all of they've got the pretty lace edges all the things okay what else do I have well now we're moved into the stuff from scrap exchange that I did not show you last week okay I got fabric. I got fabric. And it's all like the Halloween themed fabric. Now, when I got it, I just saw this. So I saw like little bits and I'm like, okay, I'm going to take a chance. And I paid $3 for this. $3. And it had in there. Are you ready? It had Alexander Henry fabric. And it's the, what is it? Like the witch is waiting Oh my gosh, I love this print. And <laughs> there's like the traveler, like the backpack. And look at this. This one's baby wearing a little frog. A witch that's baby wearing a frog. I mean, too cute. So dang cute. So I got, there's three different cuts of this fabric. And I absolutely love it. I think it's so fun. I love it. And then there was a, like, the, look at her. She's like very upset, very upset. <laughs> and then there was like fabric that I'll never use. And, but then the cutesy wootsy little witch's cookbook. And again, this was like wonky. So, I mean, cause you know, you're getting used fabric. So, but little pieces that I can use. Oh my gosh. I am making a big mess. <laughs> so I got that. And then in the bins at the scrap exchange, I, I mean, I could have stayed there all day long. I got, I found some miscellaneous bat, like miscellaneous pins that I thought could be turned into needle minders. This one was in there. It's like the Disneyland, the cars, but that was really cute. And then they had this entire bucket, bucket filled with the keys from keyboards. And I wanted to do like the Scrabble tile thing where you get all the different letters and it spells out like Stitcher. But I was really pressed on time so I couldn't go through and like pick out the different letters. But I just literally like, I got a shift. I wanted the control alt delete, whatever. So I like, just scooped what I could put in my tiny little hands and then threw it in the bucket because uh, you fill a bucket for $8, $8. So <laughs> that's why I got the keys. So I didn't spell out Stitcher, but I've got some miscellaneous keyboard keys. The next thing I got was this chart, which it's like a Ada and a little bell pole and... I was examining the hardware on how they made this little bell pole, but it has a little cardinal and I, I thought it was really cute. So I picked that up and I got the corresponding Noel 
poinsettia. Then these are really fun. And I was going to be playing matchmaker with these. I don't know the name of the designer or the name of these charts, but I saw them and I said, they must be mine. Again, I, when I went, I had, I, I spent 27 and a half, like under $30 at the scrap exchange. So uh, I left the price tags on these so you can just get an idea of what I paid for everything. This is not a typical haul. I don't normally drive five hours <laughs> to go to a craft store. So this is like, I, I knew I had limited time. I just grabbed, I just grabbed and was like, okay, I have to keep my spending under $40. So that's what I did. So this to me looks like a Paula Vaughn. I want to say I've come across this pattern in one of my Paula Vaughn books and I I cannot remember. I know Kindred Stitcher Lisa just finished a Paula Vaughn porch with the quilt and it was gorgeous. So I'm not sure if y'all know what and want to play matchmaker, let me know. So there's that. I paid a dollar 50 for that piece. And these came in the section of the store, they had nicely wrapped and taped these down. I have not even unwrapped or looked at these yet. So we've got Paula Vaughn on Ada. It looks like a 16 count Ada. The dress has little French uh, knots, the mirror image, and a little, oh, little knot. So anyway, that's super cute. This one, I, I put this in my cart so dang fast. Look at this. It's got the bead work. It looks like the start of a chatelaine. I don't know, but if you look, there's like the garden gate here that's partially completed. This one is completed. This one is just an outline. This one is just an outline with the bead work in the center. And it looks like the metallic, the krinic, krinic on the sides here. This is on a 14 count Ada. And it's got some specialty stitches. This piece I would finish. At least the gates part if I knew what that was. If y'all could help me out and play matchmaker, that would be awesome. I would like to finish this. I would. I got this pattern. And I, I don't know. I just thought of all of you. I don't know. I don't know if this is something anybody would be interested in. Uh, but the ginger and spice, I paid a dollar for it. I don't know why I pulled the tag off for this pattern. I liked it for the umbrella. Her face, I don't know. But I, I really, I, I like parasols. I love the idea of being fancy enough to carry around an umbrella. I don't know. But I love living in the era of the 21st century where everything has pockets and, you know, utilitarian stuff. So I don't know. I digress. The next thing I, I got, and I did open this one up, was the pumpkins because I love a good pumpkin. I feel like Joan and Kelly, the Kelly Stadola, she says she's got a weakness for pumpkins. You and me both. I love pumpkins. So I got this for the pattern. However, it did come partially stitched with the threads. I would use the threads. Now, it's partially stitched, but it's like real wonky. And the threads are laying different directions, there's missing stitches, like it's, I don't know if I could save this piece or if I would just start over. I feel like I would just start over. So again, I felt like a dollar for the pattern and the threads was worth it for me and I couldn't be happier. Again, if you are in the Durham area stop at scrap exchange i am not endorsed or sponsored by them i just found them and love it so happy i'm so happy for all of you thank you for encouraging me on save the stitches sustainable stitching 
rescuing needlework. Thank you, Jill from Canada for sending me some of your rescue treasures for all of you for tuning in and of course threads and twine for sponsoring my giveaway this week so again tell me your favorite moment from my channel over the past year I'd love to hear and read your <laughs> your answers and if you don't want to enter the giveaway and you just want to say hi Amanda May I love that too I want you to know that I appreciate you you matter, your stitching matters, and I cannot wait for episode 53 and beyond. It's gonna be so much fun. Thank you for going on this journey with me. Oh, oh, and I, I'm like, oh, I'm that person that just won't leave, right? <laughs> Look at this project bag I also got. <laughs> it's got feathers. Where did it go? See, I'm throwing stuff everywhere, I can't find it. Thank you, everyone who bought my book. Thank you, Pam and Steph and Donna Ray for your shout outs of my book that I saw. If any of you have bought my book or shouted me out and I did not see that, thank you. Just know that I appreciate you. This book holds two, it's got enough for 200 of your contacts. And I made it because I want to get to know people. <laughs> anyway thank all of you thank you i'm just being silly goofball at this point have a great stitching week take care